I'm Aditi, a cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Sydney. Today, I'm going to show you how to resolve issues when you're connecting to your Amazon RDS DB instance. Let's get started. First, let's set up the Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, Amazon VPC, with one public subnet and one private subnet. The DB instances in the public subnet can send outbound traffic directly to the internet. You can use security groups to control access to the DB instance. A security group rule allows a specific source to access a DB instance in an Amazon VPC that's associated with that security group. You can add rules to the security group that's associated with the Amazon VPC to allow source traffic to travel in and out of the DB instance. When you set up the rule, you can specify an IP address a range of IP addresses or another security group in the VPC. If you use network access control list, network ACLs, in your Amazon VPC, then be sure that they allow inbound and outbound traffic to travel to and from the DB instance. Check with your network administrator to make sure that your network allows traffic to and from the DB instance. Note, Amazon RDS doesn't accept Internet Control Message Protocol, ICMP traffic, including ping. Let's take a look at a few example scenarios. In the first scenario, the RDS is in public subnet inside the VPC, but I cannot connect to the instance over the Internet from a local workstation. To troubleshoot this situation, set RDS public accessibility to yes. Sign in to AWS Management Console and then navigate to the RDS console. Select the RDS DB instance that you want to change. Choose Modify. Under Connectivity, expand Additional Configuration and then select the Publicly Accessible option. Click Continue. Then choose Apply Immediately. Choose Modify DB instance and then wait for instance to be in available state. When you choose apply immediately, any pending modifications are also immediately applied, regardless of the maintenance window setting for the database instance. This action might cause unexpected downtime. Before you choose apply immediately, it's a best practice to check whether there are any pending maintenance actions in AWS RDS console. As we can see, the RDS instance is now available. Let's now go to the terminal window to check connectivity. I'm using Telnet to check if I can connect to the RDS. We still cannot connect. Next, I'll check if the subnet's route table has an internet gateway attached to it. If it doesn't, then I must attach the internet gateway and then check to see whether the subnet's route table points to the Internet Gateway. Open the Amazon RDS console. Select the DB instance. On the Connection and Security tab, under Networking, choose the VPC to open the Amazon VPC console. On the Route Table page, select the Route Table again and scroll to the bottom tabs. On the Routes tab, choose Edit Routes. Choose Add Route and then add 0000 to destination. For target, choose Internet Gateway. Choose Save Changes. Now let's use Telnet on port 3306 from the terminal window to try to connect to the instance. Because I'm still experiencing the issue, I must check the DB instance security groups. Open the Amazon RDS console and then select the DB instance. On the Connectivity and Security tab, choose VPC Security Group. This takes you to the Security Group page in the Amazon EC2 console. Select the Security Group and then choose the Inbound Rules tab to edit the rules. Choose Edit Inbound Rules. Add a rule. For type, select the correct protocol and port. 
Then select My IP from the source list to populate the local desktop IP address. Choose Save Rules and then try to connect to the desktop. Terminal window to Telnet on same port 3306. Now we are able to connect to the RDS instance. Often when you change the network, whether through a VPN, your office network or your home network, the workstation's IP address also changes. When this happens, it's a best practice to add the correct IP address in the security group, as I have just done. Let's take a look at the second scenario. The Amazon RDS is in private subnet and I cannot connect to it from my local desktop. Usually, a DB instance is run in a private subnet for security reasons, which can make it difficult to connect to from a local desktop. To access the DB instance in a private subnet, you must use the VPC network or the VPN connection from the local network. In this scenario, it's a best practice to use an Amazon EC2 instance inside the same VPC. Then try to connect to the RDS instance or set up a VPN network connection between your Amazon VPC and your local network. Add either the Amazon EC2 instance IP address or security group or your local network CIDR range for VPN connections to the Amazon RDS security group. Let's begin. Open the RDS console. Select the DB instance that you want to change. On the connectivity and security tab, choose the security group. This takes you to the security group page in the Amazon EC2 console. Select the correct security group and then choose the inbound tab to edit the rules. Add rule. For type, select the correct protocol, port and Amazon EC2 security group or IP address. In this case, I will use the private IP address of EC2 instance that will connect to this RDS and then try to connect to the DB instance from the Amazon EC2 instance. Choose Save. In this scenario, I am accessing the DB instance from an EC2 instance and they exist in different Amazon VPCs. I must activate a connection between two Amazon VPCs to allow traffic to route between them. Note, when you have an Amazon VPC peering connection between VPC A and VPC B that are either in the same or different AWS account don't have overlapping CIDR blocks. For this example, I'll use two AWS regions, the Singapore region and the Sydney region. Open the Amazon VPC console. In the navigation pane, choose peering connections. Choose create peering connection and add a name tag the DB instance VPC and the EC2 instance VPC. Then choose your account and then choose create peering connection. You can see the status is initiating request. We need to accept the peering request in Singapore region. Click actions and accept request. Now you can see the status is active. On the Amazon VPC dashboard, choose Route Table, search for the EC2 VPC ID. On the Routes tab, choose Edit. Choose Add Another Route. For destination, enter the CIDR range of the Amazon VPC. For Target, enter the ID of the pairing connection. And then Save Changes. Add a destination to the instance or cluster's VPC main route table. On the Amazon VPC dashboard of Singapore region, choose Route Table. Search for the instance on cluster's VPC ID. On the Route tab, choose Edit. Choose Add another route. For destination, enter the CIDR range of the VPC. For target, enter the ID of the pairing connection and then save changes. To reference security groups in the peered VPC, update the inbound or outbound rules for your VPC security groups.
This allows traffic to flow to and from instances that are associated with the referenced security group in the peered VPC. To use the Amazon VPC console to update your security group rules, open the Amazon VPC console. In the navigation pane, choose security groups. Select the security group and then choose inbound rules to modify the inbound rules or outbound rules to modify the outbound rules. Choose edit and then add another rule. Specify the type, protocol and port range as required. For source or destination, enter the ID of the security group in the peer VPC if it is in the same region or enter the CIDR block of the peer VPC if it is in a different region. Save rules. Test connectivity through Telnet. Run the following command to check whether you can connect to the database. As you can see, we are able to connect to the RDS instance. And now you know how to resolve issues when you are connecting to your Amazon RDS DB instance. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.